Hello everyone, uh, my name is Tyrone and today I'm going to give you guys a tutorial on how to use a digital multimeter to check an electrical outlet. The meter that we're going to use here today is a Fluke. It's a model T5-1000 and this particular multimeter is self-ranging and what that means is is if I <clears throat> dial this dial in to check voltage, amperage, or whatever uh, variable I'm trying to test, it will automatically uh, adjust to that particular particular uh, item that I'm trying to test. And there's no need to do anything further. So if I'm looking to test voltage, I turn it to V for voltage. And I can test my, my voltage source and see if there's actually voltage present. Uh, before I go into actually testing the outlet, <clears throat> I'm going to show you a few things about the outlet that's very important that you need to know. The first thing is, if you look at this, this outlet, you're going to notice that it has two different sides and one side is longer than the other. The long side is connected to what we call the neutral conductor or the grounded conductor. The short side is connected to what we call the line side or the hot conductor or the phase conductor. The round, the round part is connected to your grounding conductor or your ground. Uh, sometimes you see a situation where people break off the third prong, which is the, the, the ground side of the outlet, <clears throat> and of course that's very bad because whatever you plug into it wouldn't be grounded. But the reason I'm, I'm saying this because I want to give you some, some uh, perspective on the fact that one side is longer than the other, and it's, in, it's that way intentionally. If you were to ever look at the end of the plug on your appliance or equipment that, that you're trying to plug into this outlet, you'll notice that also one side is longer than the other. And it is and it's, uh, designed that way so that you can't reverse the plug. If you were able to actually reverse the plug, you would more than likely damage whatever it is you're plugging into the outlet. Also, if you were to succeed, uh, there's a good possibility that you could create a situation where someone could get shocked or electrocuted. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our voltage tester across the long side and the short side, which again, the long side is your neutral or grounded conductor. The short side is your hot or your line side of the, of the receptacle. And we're going to stick this guy right on in. And right now we're reading 123 volts, okay? That's one way of checking. And I want to also add one other thing. When you go to check an outlet, you should always stick your prong in the long side first, which is your grounded or neutral conductor. And the reason for that is, if I was to stick it, the test lead in the short side first, this test lead that I'm holding is now energized with 120 volts. And that could also be a dangerous situation if you were to go in between it and something that's grounded. So always check to make sure that you put your test lead in the long side first, which is the grounded conductor, and then the short side, which is the hot side. Also, one other thing you need to take note of is before you check an outlet, you always want to make sure that your, your meter is working properly. And the way you do that is you go to an outlet that you know is working. One that maybe you have something plugged in like a lamp and that lamp is actually working. It's turning on and off. The light comes on and goes off. You know that that outlet is energized. You know that it's hot. You know that it's working. You want to go there and you're going to unplug that lamp or whatever appliance it is plugged into it that gives you the assurance that that outlet is actually working. You stick your prongs in it 
and make sure that you get the voltage that you're looking for. So, a quick recap. Before you check the outlet that you intend on working on, you want to make sure that the, the meter is actually working by going to an outlet that you know is, is, uh, uh, that is on, that is actually working, and you want to check it first. Make sure that you get voltage. That lets you know that your meter is working properly. Move on to the outlet that you intend on working on. Go between the long side first. Stick it in first in the long side, which is a neutral conductor. That way you're not holding a hot prong in your hand. Then you stick it into the short side and read your voltage. Now, there's actually two ways to check an outlet. The way I just showed you, going between the, the, the hot wire and the neutral conductor. The second way is going from the hot wire and I'm doing it the way that I told you guys not to do it to the ground and you should read 110 volts or 120 volts or whatever the voltage is that's at present at the outlet now if you do this and you do not see voltage that's a great indication that your ground is not connected or is open which again is another bad situation also you want to make sure that your outlet doesn't have the polarity reversed. If you go from the long side of the outlet or the neutral side to the ground and you read voltage, that means that the outlet is wired backwards, meaning that the hot wire is on the neutral side and the neutral side is on the hot wire. So these are some of the things that you want to look for when you're testing this outlet, aside from actually making sure that it's off if you're intending on working on it. So I'll uh, give you guys a quick recap. Always check your, your voltage test on a known live circuit. Make sure that it's actually working. Then you go to the outlet that you intend on working on and you check. Make sure that you have voltage there. If you have voltage there and you intend on working on it, you go to your circuit breaker panel and you turn it off. The long side of the outlet is neutral or grounded. The short side is line, phase, or hot whichever you want to call it. And the round part at the bottom is your ground. Uh, I will be doing some more tutorials in the future uh, to give a little bit more detail on some of the other functions that you could uh, use the digital multimeter for. But for this particular tutorial, this is pretty much it. And I hope it was helpful. And thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.